All right, so the last time that I tried to do one of these uh, sharpening videos, I did it with the plastic, uh, I almost said plastic spoon. I did it with the plastic knife, and as you guys saw, just no matter how hard I tried, I could not get an edge on that plastic knife. I guess the plastic was just so cheap or whatever. Anyway, I couldn't do it. In the comments of that video, a lot of people suggested that I try the same thing, but with plexiglass. I guess since plexiglass is kind of resembles a plastic knife, maybe, I bought a sheet of eighth inch thick plexiglass. I have already cut this little, uh, little piece off of it, and I'm gonna do my best to take this square and craft this into something that is shaped like a knife, and then I'm gonna try again to take that thing that I craft and try to make it into something sharp enough that can ultimately cut a water bottle in half. That's the goal. I don't really care. We're gonna put it on the sharpness tester. I don't really care what the sharpness tester says. All I care about is that I can slice a water bottle in half. That's what makes me happy. Let's peel this off. Ooh. This actually looks pretty high quality. So as you can see, or maybe you can't see because it's so clear, that is our plexiglass. That is what we have to work with. I think I said it was an eighth inch thick. So the majority of how I'm gonna be doing this is just with a belt sander, and then I'm gonna run it on the, um, and then if I can, I'm gonna try to run it through the work sharp, and then probably we'll take it to the stones if we need to. I think the work sharp should probably be able to uh, put enough of an edge on it. All right guys, so before we go any farther, this video is sponsored by Casetify. If you don't know, Casetify makes premium phone cases and they sent me a few to share with you guys. They sent, the first phone case they sent <laughs> is this one, which is just like a uh, astronaut floating out in outer space. Looks pretty cool. They also sent this one, which I really like. If you've ever uh, torn down a phone and looked at the inside of a phone, that's basically what this is replicating, just like the, you know, the fragile and like all the different like warnings and like QR codes and all that uh, little intricate stuff that's on the inside of a phone. I really like that. I think it's really cool. It makes it look like your phone is like missing the back of it or something. And then they also sent this, which is something that sets Casetify apart from other brands. This one you can see, it just says my name on it, but you can actually customize a phone case to say pretty much whatever you want, different font, different colors. You can put it at, you, know, you can put it diagonal, up and down, left to right. I mean, you can change it. You can customize it a bunch of different ways. And then the fourth phone case that they sent me, which is actually the one that is on my phone right now, which is my absolute favorite, is just a simple clear phone case that says you lost the game. If you're older like me, you know all about the game. I just, I really love this. I think it's really funny. And especially if someone like in public sees it and they, you know, they know about it, you know, you'll get a chuckle out of it. I really like that. So besides these phone cases, you know, looking good, they actually are very protective. These, these phone cases that I have here are the impact cases. These cases are rated for 6.6 .6 feet of drop protection. They also make the ultra impact cases, which are basically the same case, but they have extra protection around the corners. And those are rated for 9.8 feet of protection. So they not only look good, but they actually add a lot of protection. So instead of just looking at them, let's go ahead and do a drop test and make sure they work. Got the phone case. We're gonna drop it from about here. And three, two, one. And as you can see, no cracks, not even any scratches. So you can see that the cases do protect as advertised. So if you are in the market for a new phone case, you can go to casetify.com forward slash Tyler tube. Or if you just want to make it really easy, I'm going to have the link in the top of my description. If you, as long as you click that link and go through that link, you will get 15% off of your order. All right. So I kind of, uh, I don't know how well you can see it. I kind of drew a very <laughs> rough shape of the knife that I am trying to create. I know it doesn't, I know it looks stupid. Give me a break, okay? I put things in jars. I'm not a knife maker. This is this is what you're gonna get. Put on our safety glasses, and hopefully this doesn't take, uh, take too long to kind of mold down.
this is going to be very, very miserable. All It's all little pieces of hot plastic that are just landing everywhere. I'm actually going to see if I can find a way to cut this extra off faster. I wonder if uh, side cutters might be a good move here. That might not be too bad. We're going to have shards of plexiglass everywhere. <sighs> what if we... Uh, <laughs> Bring back that uh, that old thousand degree knife challenge. I wonder if that'll be a viable option. That didn't take long. Let's see what we got here. Come on. I don't know if that's worth it or not. This isn't too bad, I don't guess. All right, I guess I'm just gonna keep doing this, come back whenever I can do something meaningful. All right, so <laughs> this is where we're at currently. Trust me, you don't wanna know what I just went through to, to even get this far. A lot of uh, OSHA violations and knives and blow torches and side cutters and a bunch of stuff. Just don't worry about it. Let's just get back to this. So, I feel like we're not doing half bad. It, uh, I got a pretty decent uh, you know, starter edge going here. Handle's actually pretty nice. Feels kind of good. I'm happy with the shape. It looks like it should be able to slice through a water bottle pretty easy if I can get it sharp enough. Let's move on to the work sharp. So, obviously, this is the work sharp. This is basically like a mini belt sander that is made for sharpening knives. So, it should have no problem bringing this to a very sharp edge. Most of you have seen this before. You know how this works. It's very simple. You just turn it on and then just drag the knife on either side and it sharpens both sides. I think that we are really getting, I think we're really getting somewhere like we're gonna end up having the same problem as the butter knife. That once the material gets thin enough to be sharp, that it just kinda like flakes off and breaks and can't really actually get sharp. But we'll see. All right, let's see what we got here. Maybe I stand corrected. That actually might be a half decent edge. I think this could be a little bit ambitious. We're getting somewhere. We're probably not even halfway to where we need to be. We might be working with something a little bit dangerous. I feel like that's just about as sharp as we're gonna be able to get off of the work sharp. I'll tell you, that feels pretty sharp. Go back to the paper. Mmm. That's something. It's not exactly what we're looking for. We act. We we really, really might have a chance of this. Maybe once I like, sharpen a little bit extra on the sharpening stones, we actually might have something dangerous on our hands. So before I start working on this edge with the stones, I broke out the sharpness tester. I just want to see where we're at, and then we'll check it. Of course, after we uh, use the stones on it. So let's hope for low numbers. Oh, it's not looking good. Oh, as you can see, 2,340 grams. It did leave a little divot in the edge, just like the butter knife. And I think the butter knife, after we took it off the work sharp, I think the butter knife was somewhere around the same. I think it was actually a little bit less. So this might actually be a little bit more dull than the butter knife. Although it feels sharper to the, you know, to the thumb, which 
doesn't really mean much. Uh, so we probably, we probably got a long way to go. All right, these are the stones. I know pretty much all of you guys have seen these before. I'm gonna go through all the, all of the steps. We have a 400 grit, a thousand grit, 3,000, and an 8,000. And I'm not gonna sit here and make you guys watch me run this thing back and forth on a stone for the next 30 minutes to an hour. But you guys know how they work. You just drag it down one edge, and you go to the other side and do the same thing. And you just go back and forth for like 30 minutes. I'm not gonna make you suffer through that. But hopefully by the time I get done. Doing th going through four different stones, hopefully we will have a very, very sharp edge. Okay, so I have finished up with all the stones, and what I ended up doing was, for all four stones, or all, all four different grits, I did 300 passes. So, 150 passes on each side, you know, just alternating back and forth. Obviously this took a, a long while, but I wanted to make sure that this had every single possible opportunity to get as sharp as humanly possible. And after all of those passes, all the way up to 8,000 grit, the sides feel very, very smooth, but the edge honestly feels maybe 10% sharper, maybe 20% sharper, if that. No, it's nothing in, crazy, it's not, in, like, it's not does not feel super impressively sharp compared to what it was before I started. I'm kind of starting to lose hope that this is going to get like crazy sharp. So let's pull out the sharpness tester. It was 2200 grams last time. 2200 and some change last time. Let's see where we're at. Oh. Okay, so it broke at 1960. So from 2200 in some change to 1960 and some change. I don't know how much of a, I don't know what kind of percentage increase that is. That puts us uh, <laughs> just a little bit sharper than a common butter knife. 2000 is a common butter knife and we're at 1960. So we're just a little bit, after all that work, we're just a tiny bit sharper than a butter knife. This seems to be a, uh, common theme with trying to sharpen things that uh, aren't usually made to be sharp. I guess to finish this knife off, we need to add a little handle, because no knife is complete without a handle. Ah, now that way I won't uh, slice my hand open. And as promised, we have to at least try to cut the water bottle in half, even though it probably won't happen. <sighs> All right, <laughs> get ready for the disappointment. Here we go. Three. Two, one. That wasn't completely disappointing. Some water came out. Oh, okay. So we hit, oh, wait a minute. We actually gashed it pretty good. Let's try again. And also on top of it not being horrible, it doesn't seem like our edge was really effective at all. All right, let's try one more time. Swing like we mean it. Hmm. That one was even worse. That one did not even get a little bit of a slice. So, I don't know how that works. Try again. Maybe I'm going to try to like, just, just like, I don't know, slice more? I feel like maybe, maybe I'm like hitting too much and maybe I just need to like slice more. Really? cut like probably 40% of the way. Maybe, maybe this is a technique thing. See if we can get this technique down. So kind of, we've got to, we've got to slice more. Well, pretty much nothing. <sighs> that one wasn't too bad either. That was another slight. Oh, that one was like probably, let me empty this water out. That one was probably like maybe 50%. I kind of ripped it a little bit extra there. I don't think that we're gonna be able to get it to slice all the way through. This did perform better than I expected. Once you, once you get the, the right technique down and you get more of a slice to it, it turns out you can actually cut a little bit. 
And now, just because people asked for it in the last video, this is a chunk of ballistics gel, if you don't already know. And what this does is simulate human flesh. Or maybe just flesh in general, but I think human flesh. So, uh, people in the last video wanted to see, wanted to know if the knife, I think it would be the butter knife, they wanted to know if it would, um, like, cut a person. So, I guess I'm just going to kind of <laughs> cut this ballistics gel. That's actually a pretty semi-deep cut. Oh, wow. It does stab. Let's try and just do like a, a fast slice over here. No, that's not that great. Okay, so you can see there, it will slice. Nothing, nothing crazy. Actually, that's... Once you kind of, if you kind of saw it back and forth, I mean, you could really get it deep in there. Maybe this actually isn't half bad. So, to answer the question, how sharp can you make a piece of plexiglass? Uh, the answer is not super sharp but you can make it sharp enough that you can uh, have a little fun with it. Maybe halfway cut a water bottle, cut a little ballistics gel, but overall not that sharp. I did have a lot of fun making this and it actually turned out overall as far as the looks goes, it turned out a lot better than I thought. I figured I would have something that would just be some cobbled up mess, but it's actually not too bad. If there's anything else that you wanna see me uh, try to make a knife out of or see how sharp I can get it, leave a comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.